Stu, you're coming up to four years now as a Southampton player. Feeling part of the furniture? It's been a long time. It feels strange. Sometimes it feels like I've not been here hardly at all, and then sometimes it feels like I've been here for ages. So four years sounds like a lot. Uh, time has flown by. I definitely feel different um, than I did when I arrived um, back then. It's good to be a part of the Southampton family. Before you came here, you'd never been too far from home. You've suddenly gone from one end of the UK to the other. How long did it take for this to really feel like your home? It took a little while. I think it always helps when you play. Um, when you play more and you play every week and you feel more part of it um, and you settle in a bit quicker. But yeah, I used to probably go back to Scotland a little fair bit when I first came. Um, just because you miss the home comforts, you miss friends, you miss family. Um, but the more time uh, you spend down here, uh, the more time you, you be, feels like home. Uh, you're already home. Getting used to a new league as well and a new environment, having come from Celtic where the expectation is almost to win everything every season, was, was that in itself a change that you had to mentally adjust to? Yeah, you have to kind of let that go because you can't win every single game in the Premier League. I think the beautiful thing about the Premier League is that I feel you go into any game and you feel that you can win even against the best teams in the league, which is um, a great feeling and we've shown that in the past that we can do that as well. So. Yeah, the Premier League as a whole is, they say, the best league in the world and that's where everyone, every player wants to be and, and compete in. One of the changes that happened obviously quite soon after you joined was the manager coming in. He's been here ever since. He's had a massive influence over the club overall, but what sort of influence has he had on you? I don't think he liked me very much when he first came, <laughs> that's fair to say. But yeah, he, he, he brought a new formation, a formation that I'd never experienced before. Um, so it took a while to, to try and learn that tactically. The number 10 position is um, something I've never encountered before um, in the way that it's, it's used here. So that took some time to understand and, and learn. But once you do understand and learn, you see its value and um, you try to implement that in your own game. And then it's about working hard to try and get in the teams. Did it take a bit of time for him to convince you he was using you correctly? Uh, I don't think so. I think because I'd been used to playing in a more central role and, and the, the position he was asking me to play does have central tendencies but is um, ultimately in a sort of wider role. I think it was um, both understanding that I could play that role and, and, um, and showing him that I could as well. Well, I think he's, uh, he's quite direct in, in what he wants from, from each player and each position. Um, and I think it's a simple thing. The more you do it, the more people understand of what's expected in that role and uh, I'm quite a creative player, I like to feel free in my position. Um, so to have that balance in my own mind of doing what I'm asked to do, but also have the ability to let all that go and be free when I play, and I feel that brings the best out of me. Your relationship with the supporters here, it, it feels like a really strong bond that you have. They love the song. Um, <laughs> what do you make of, of the crowd at St Mary's and that experience? Yeah, I mean, it's always, it's always loud. I think. You always feel, especially when we have you know, the good moments in the game, we're going forward and you feel them getting louder. And there's always been special games at home. It's, you know, we had an experience in, in lockdown where the fans weren't there and uh, weird at first, and then you kind of get used to it and then you realise that scoring a goal isn't quite the same. So Recently, you were at Ellen Road playing in front of a full house there. Was that particularly special for you personally? Yeah, it was nice. Um, I went to watch Leeds United as a young player, a uh, young player, a young person. Um, my grandparents used to live in Yorkshire, so I watched a couple of games and I was during the warm-up trying to remember where I sat. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't try to picture it, um, but obviously I remember being at the game and uh, the experience and watching it and thinking, it was just a nice moment to look around and think um, from going from watching in the stands as a young person to, to coming onto the pitch. So it was nice um, to uh, have made that transition and, and see how far I've come. Life away from football, what makes you tick off the pitch? I don't, I think because we play football every day and life is consumed with football constantly, I try to stay away from it outside of football and not to say I don't watch any single game, but yeah, I like to just focus on other things, just like watching movies and taking my dog for a walk, going for coffee, it's just simple things that people do, go and see friends and family whenever I can. Do you consider yourself quite a private person? I mean, you're not all over social media all the time, that sort of thing. I feel it's unfair of me to say that I don't like it because it's entirely, you know, it's that people's preferences and people do like it and people have their own motives. For me, it just seems 
uh, a lot of energy when I don't particularly enjoy the consistent nature of it and the feeling of needing to keep up. Does that go for media interviews and public appearances <laughs> I think you know as it well? Does, yeah, yeah, not my favourite thing to do. I think um, that's just part of football, isn't it? People are interested in um, football and that's just part of the world. It's something I'm not particularly interested in. I like playing football and that's why I'm here. So, Do you ever think about life after football? I never used to, but now that I'm getting on a bit, I have to maybe think about that and what that means. Hit the big 3 out. Yeah. So now it's, you can press the panic button and maybe when the time comes, I'll take some time out and then I'll realise what I actually like and what I want to do. I know you're going to hate this question and there's a reason you haven't brought it up yourself, but you've got the law degree. Would you want to go into that or you know, is that something that's kind of left in the past now? Uh, probably left in the past. I'm glad I did it and it's a nice thing to have. It can maybe be used for something else, but I don't think I'll be using it for, to isolate myself in, in law. It's been an amazing kind of couple of years of progress for your national team. Starting with the Euros, how do you reflect on that whole experience? Mixed emotions, obviously, going to the tournament, getting the, so the, I think it was the first time in over 20 years, it's an amazing thing for the country. It was a shame all the fans couldn't be there at the stadium. A strange tournament in the sense that we played two games at Hamden. Disappointing not to have performed better. Obviously, the England game was, was a big one for us and a big performance. But yeah, but a little bit disappointed not to progress. But I think to get there was, was fantastic. I think Steve Clark's done a great job for Scotland. We've now become more solid and more consistent competing in games and when in the previous years we would have, we would have lost. So yeah, he's, he's done brilliant for the team. It's a great group of boys. I love going away and, and seeing them all and it's a good time to be a Scotland fan, I think. Did you watch the World Cup draw? Were you up in Leeds for that? Yeah, some of the boys were watching it on the phone. We, just, we were pulling up to the hotel at the time and uh, dragging out, wasn't it? It was a little bit delayed. So uh, yeah, we, we kept an eye on it and obviously an interesting, interesting group, um, but our focus is not on that just yet. Any conversations with Prowsey? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. I think uh, we need to wait to, to see um, there's two games standing in the way of that first, so our, all our focus is on that. Yeah, a huge summer to come and hopefully a big winter as well. Let's hope so.